Hello again everyone from Tokyo Japan. Welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera and today we're going to be having a look at uh, one of my favorite uh, Japanese rangefinder cameras and one of the most unusual ones which was produced in Japan and that is the uh, Minolta Super A interchangeable lens rangefinder camera. If you're interested in purchasing this Minolta or another vintage Japanese camera, I sell these in my Etsy and eBay stores. Please check the description below the video for links to my stores. So uh, the Minolta Super A was introduced in 1957 and it was mainly a kind of marketing experiment. Uh, Minolta and Olympus decided to uh, try their hand at producing an interchangeable lens rangefinder camera which used uh, leaf shutter instead of the more common uh, and more historical uh, focal plane shutter. Uh, Japanese manufacturers bought these leaf shutters from Coppel and Seiko in large numbers and the shutters came pre-tested and pre-assembled so simply all they had to do to put them in the camera was bolt them in, uh, uh, adjust the lens, collimate a little bit and the camera was uh, uh, pretty easy to make whereas the focal plane shutters were more labor intensive. It took time to set them up and adjust them and uh, in Japan at the time they believed that the uh, leaf shutters were more accurate and would uh, hold their adjustment longer than the focal plane shutters. Uh, unfortunately as a marketing experiment it failed. Uh, the camera did not catch on uh, because mainly the complexity and high price of the camera put it out of reach of uh, most Japanese consumers and if they had the kind of money that they would spend on a Super A they might as well buy a Leica or something like that. So. Very few of these were uh, made and sold, and uh, this is only the second one which I've come across this year, and the only one which uh, was uh, in good condition. In the last uh, 10 years or so, I've sold only three, uh, well two, not including this one. Uh, this one will be listing for sale shortly. So they're quite rare. Uh, Minolta produced seven lenses for the Super A system. They produced a 35 millimeter wide angle lens, a 50 millimeter f2.8 lens, a 50 millimeter f2 lens, uh, this is an example of that one, a 50 millimeter f1.8 lens, an 85 millimeter lens, a 100 millimeter lens, and a 135 millimeter lens. So, um, as rare as the cameras are, the accessory lenses are like impossibly rare to find. Um, occasionally I come across them, but they're scratched up or not working, and so far I haven't been able to be lucky enough to find one where someone doesn't know what it is. Uh, in Japan the lenses are quite sought after uh, due to their scarcity. But uh, in that places outside Japan they're not really worth anything because no one knows what they are or what they fit. And a few of these uh, Super A cameras ended up outside Japan. So let's go ahead and take a look at the functions and operation and how to use the Minolta Super A. And uh, for a change we're going to start from the back of the camera. You notice on the back we have this uh, this indicator in the middle and this big plastic thing on the top. Uh, this indicator is a mechanical computer for figuring out the depth of field for the various lenses. You select the lens and the aperture setting and this will tell you what to expect for the depth of field. Uh, it, it's, just, it's not hard to figure out, to just look at it a few minutes and uh, since you'll probably only ever see one of these with the 50 millimeter lens, all you have to do is look at the, the uh, the instructions for the 50 millimeter lens. Uh, the black plastic thing on the back here is a cover. If you remove the two screws and take it off, underneath you'll find the adjusting screws for the rangefinder. Uh, though the Minolta Super A was the most complicated rangefinder Minolta made, it has the easiest to adjust uh, uh, rangefinder and viewfinder system. Moving to the top of the camera, we have the uh, film rewind uh, dial here. We have the shoe where you would fit an accessory flash or the accessory light meter, which Minolta made for these cameras, which is also very, very rare and hard to come across. Uh, the meter slides on and engages the shutter speed dial here. And by turning the dial on the uh, light meter, uh, it adjusts the uh, shutter speed. If you're not using the light meter, which 99.9% .9 of us won't, you just simply turn the dial here. Uh, on the top of the dial, you'll see the different numbers for the different shutter speeds. Uh, right here, you'll find the shutter release button, which is threaded for standard cable release. Uh, here you have the film counter window, and here we have the uh, shutter charging and film winding lever. 
and inside here we have uh, a dial which you use to adjust to remind you what uh, speed film you have loaded in the camera. Moving to the front of the camera we have uh, the rangefinder window, the viewfinder window, and we have um, a light diffuser which allows light to come in onto the projected uh, frame lines. Uh, the frame lines uh, in the Minolta Super A are not adjustable, but they're easy to use. Um, you, uh, the 50 millimeter one is the only one you'll need to pay attention to. Uh, uh, you win the lottery before you find all the lenses you need to uh, use to take advantage of all the frame lines. Uh, this big uh, tab here is what you use to adjust the. Uh, excuse me, I don't have the that set all the way on. The focusing tab for the lens. And in the middle of the uh, focusing tab is a button. To remove and change the lens, you push this button, and on the back of the lens there is a bayonet collar. You turn this to the left, and the lens pops off. And underneath you can see the shutter assembly. And to put it back on, you line up with the red mark to the top, depress the button, and uh, turn it to the right until it's locked into place. And once it's locked into place, the uh, focus turns freely. On the bottom of the camera, we have a tripod socket and we have the release uh, to rewind the film. And putting in the film is quite easy. There's a catch here for the uh, film door release. Pull it downward to open the film door. We have a film pressure plate. And this little button here is the uh, uh, release for the, to rewind or reset the uh, film counter dial. Uh, push up on the forks there, uh, drop in your 35mm film cartridge, pull it across, put the tab inside of the uh, take-up spool, and just wind the film, close the door, and you're ready to go. Uh, these are really amazing cameras, uh, a very unique uh, exercise in Japanese technology at the time. Uh, they're wonderfully made, and they, they remind me a lot of the Kodak... Uh, was it the Kodak Extra uh, 35 millimeter rangefinder camera, which was a very complicated uh, contraption and uh, designed, you know, laughably to compete against the, the Leica M cameras of the time. Uh, fortunately, the Minolta Super A is more reliable and easier to use than the Kodak Extra, despite the, the similarities in their appearance. It's a really good camera to shoot with, and the lens is particularly the 50 millimeter f2 lens. is It's wonderful. Uh, I really love this lens, and uh, uh, the one in this camera is remarkably nice. Uh, the 50 millimeter f1.8 lens is similar to the one you would find on the Minolta 2B uh, rangefinder camera, and unfortunately, I've only seen one of those for it, which fits the Super A, and it was uh, all dented and scratched up and completely useless. And, uh, so I'm uh, kind of upset to, to find that. But anyway, uh, that's my review of the Minolta Super A camera. I'll be listing this for sale shortly. So uh, please check my Etsy and eBay stores if you're interested in it. And I'll be posting videos about more cameras soon. So please stay tuned. Uh, thanks a lot for watching.